What if I told you that right now, as you're watching this, there's a complete institutional finance stack that's being assembled on blockchain for the first time in history. It's not scattered across different chains, doesn't require a dozen different protocols, and it's not dependent on experimental smart contracts. I'm talking about native tokenization, compliance, infrastructure, decentralized exchange, lending protocols, and privacy features, all integrated at the protocol level on a single blockchain that's already processing billions of dollars in volume. The XRP Ledger is the product of years of development, and it represents something rare in crypto. It's a complete production-ready platform for institutional finance that doesn't require duct taping together a bunch of separate protocols. I've been in crypto for a very long time, and I'll tell you that there's a lot of projects that are just pure vaporware. They promise revolutionary features that either never ship or ship half-baked and get unused. There's a lot of projects that announce big visions and they can't execute on them. And the gap between marketing and reality is pretty big. And so this is really a sequential execution of Ripple's master plan all along. In this video, we're going to be talking about the evolution of the XRP ledger to be a complete institutional finance stack. And you're going to understand how each component works and why they're designed to work together and what becomes possible with tokenization, compliance, trading, lending, and privacy all on a single platform. So you might be asking, why does having everything on one blockchain matter versus having multiple specialized chains? And what does that enable that makes it difficult or impossible on other infrastructure? Well, let's start by mapping the complete stack. Every institutional finance stack needs a foundation. And the XRP Ledger's foundation consists of two big elements, settlement infrastructure and identity infrastructure. The settlement layer is what the XRP Ledger's been perfecting for over a decade. Ledgers close every three to five seconds with immediate finality. And so there's no probabilistic confirmation, no reorganization risk, and no waiting for multiple blocks. When a transaction clears on the XRP Ledger, it's final. Transactions cost a fraction of a penny, and that predictable pricing makes institutional scale activity really viable. The native DEX operates at a protocol level. And with that, the XRP Ledger's native decentralized exchange, or DEX, operates at the protocol level, not as a smart contract layered on top. It's been processing billions in volume for years with zero downtime, zero exploits, and no governance drama. For institutions that are building trading systems, that reliability is non-negotiable. Payment channels on the XRP ledger enable high-frequency payments off-chain with settlement on-chain. So two parties can transact thousands of times per second off-ledger and then settle that net position on-ledger whenever it's needed. That enables use cases like streaming payments, pay-per-use APIs, and real-time settlements that would be really economically impossible without this type of technology. The XRP Ledger infrastructure just works, and that allows developers to build applications rather than constantly firefighting infrastructure problems. The identity layer is relatively new, but super important. Decentralized identifiers, or DIDs, let institutions anchor verifiable identities without centralized control. Your DID is cryptographically secured, portable across applications, and under your own control. Credentials that are built on DID enable portable attestations. So a uh, KYC, or Know Your Customer Provider, verifies your identity and issues a credential. A regulatory authority might issue one and confirm your licensing status. Or an institution might issue one and confirm you're an approved counterparty. These kind of credentials are privacy preserving. You don't broadcast your passport to the world when you present a cryptographic proof that an authorized issuer has verified you. And so with that, different applications can require different credentials without needing to rebuild identity verification from scratch. For institutions, this solves the current nightmare of fragmented KYC where every platform requires separate verification. And with standardized credentials on the XRP ledger, identity becomes portable, creates one verification with universal acceptance by applications that trust the issuing authority. Multipurpose tokens are the language that the XRP ledger uses to represent financial assets. And they're fundamentally more sophisticated than simple token standards like ERC-20. Traditional token standards are basically counter. They track how many tokens each address holds, but carry virtually no additional information. And that works fine for simple assets like utility tokens or basic stable coins, but it starts to break down with complex financial instruments. You can think about it like how you might want to represent a bond that pays quarterly coupons, matures in five years, and then needs to only be traded among institutional investors. With ERC-20, you'd need some pretty elaborate smart contracts and managing all that logic separately from the token itself. With multipurpose tokens, the token is the complete representation of the financial instrument. Embedded metadata allows issuers to include essential information directly in the token. Maturity dates, interest rates, different tranches, regulatory identifiers, transfer restrictions, anything that you might need to faithfully represent the underlying asset. And transfer restrictions can be programmed into multipurpose tokens as well. A tokenized security might only allow transfers between accredited investors that are holding valid credentials. A lock token might prohibit transfers until a vesting schedule completes. And a geographically restricted token might only allow transfers to assets with credentials from approved jurisdictions. And these are part of the token standard itself, thoroughly audited and battle-tested at the protocol level. 
Programmable actions on the XRP ledger allow complex financial workflows, and a multi-purpose token that represents a bond can automatically distribute interest payments to holders on scheduled dates. A multi-purpose token that represents structured products can execute waterfall distributions across different tranches based on programmed rules. And as a matter of fact, MPTs can interact with other XRP ledger features all the way through. They can be traded on the native DEX, they can be held in token escrow for conditional settlement, they can be used as collateral in lending protocols, and they can also be made confidential using zero-knowledge proofs. And regulatory compliance is built into the token standard. Issuers can program MPTs to enforce securities law automatically. Maximum holdings, lockup periods, accreditation requirements. For institutions, that transforms tokenization from experimental to production ready. You're not just hoping that your smart contract works, but you're using audited protocol level functionality that hundreds of validators enforce. With the multi-purpose token standard on the XRP ledger, Expect to see a ton of financial instruments and institutions that finally have the tools to represent complex assets accurately on blockchain start to onboard. And so with that, having tokenization capabilities really doesn't matter if institutions can't meet regulatory requirements. The XRP Ledger's compliance layer provides the tools that regulated entities need to operate legally and safely. Permission domains, for example, can create gated environments where participation requires specific credentials to enter. You can think of them like controlled access zones within the broader XRP Ledger ecosystem. An asset issuer could create permission domains requiring participants to hold valid KYC credentials from approved providers. When they do that, then only accounts presenting those credentials could interact with tokens within that domain. And so that creates a compliant trading venue without requiring permission blockchain infrastructure. And so what's really powerful about this is the composability. Different domains can have different requirements. A domain for U.S. securities might require U.S. securities accreditation credentials. A domain for institutional wholesale markets might require banking licenses. Or a domain for retail products might require basic identity verification. All those can coexist in the same infrastructure. And so the permission DEX extends the native DEX into regulatory context. Instead of creating entirely separate trading systems, a permission DEX lets issuers define who can trade specific assets based on credential requirements. A tokenized bond could be restricted to institutional investors only. And so the DEX can enforce those kind of rules automatically and do something like prevent retail accounts from placing orders regardless of whether they know the token exists or not. Compliance happens at the protocol level rather than through external gatekeepers. And so this solves a major problem for tokenized securities. How do you prevent unauthorized trading without sacrificing the efficiency of a decentralized exchange? The permission DEX is the answer to that problem automated enforcement of eligibility requirements, while maintaining an order book and efficiency that transparent price discovery. Deep Freeze is another feature that really enhanced the XRP ledger and provides issuers with emergency controls when legal requirements demand immediate action. If a court were to order asset freezes or a sanctioned entity appears in the system, the Deep Freeze system prevents that address from sending or receiving specific tokens. Unlike freezing mechanisms on other blockchains that only block the outgoing transfers, Deep freeze blocks both directions. A frozen address can't launder funds through an incoming transfer and then DEX trading. It's completely isolated from the token economy. For stablecoin issuers dealing with OFAC sanctions lists, that kind of capability isn't optional. It's legally required. And the XRP ledger built that all at the protocol level so every issuer has access to the tools they need for compliance. Permission delegation enables a flexible control hierarchy. A token issuer might delegate clawback rights to designated compliance officers, a fund manager might delegate voting rights to beneficial owners while retaining transfer controls, or a court might appoint a receiver with specific limited authorities over a token. These kind of delegations are recorded on ledger and they're auditable by all parties, but they remain enforceable by the protocol. Traditional finances uses similar delegation mechanisms, but they're all managed through legal contracts and manual processes. And the XRP ledger automates all that cryptographically and enforces those relationships. And so the XRP ledger's clawback mechanism allows authorized parties to reverse transfers when legally required. And just know that clawback is not enabled on XRP itself, but it can be a feature that's enabled for issued assets. If a token transfer violates a securities law, if the payment results from fraud, or a court orders a reversal, authorized entities can claw back tokens to correct the violation. And so that might seem contrary to blockchain principles of immutability, but remember that the XRP ledger is built for regulated institutional finance, where legal remedies have to exist. The important thing is making the clawback authorization transparent and auditable, so it can't be abused. Credentials for compliance tie everything together. Instead of each issuer rebuilding KYC from scratch, they accept standard credentials from trusted providers. Instead of manually vetting each participant, they program credential requirements onto tokens and domains instead of hoping that participants just comply. They enforce compliance cryptographically. For banks and regulated institutions, this compliance stack is what makes the XRP ledger viable for production use. You're not asking regulators to accept some crypto anarchist vision of unstoppable transactions, but you're showing them a system with more control, more auditability, 
and more transparency than traditional financial infrastructure. Having compliant tokenized assets is great, but they need liquid markets to be able to be useful. And the XRP Ledger's liquidity layer provides multiple mechanisms for price discovery and trading. The native DEX operates as an order book exchange at the protocol level. And unlike other AMM-based DEXs, the XRP Ledger's DEX matches buy and sell orders directly and provides a familiar trading experience for institutional traders that is something they would expect. Order books let you match with specific counterparties at negotiated prices and enables institutional sized trades without massive slippage. The DEX supports limit orders, market orders, and complex order types. Traders can place one good till canceled order and sit in the order book until it's filled. Market makers can provide liquidity by posting two-sided quotes, and arbitragers can profit from price discrepancies across markets and improve their efficiency in doing it. Automated market makers were added to the XRP ledger for assets and order books that liquidity might be thin, and the AMM updates have have rolled out improvements for institutional use, such as auction mechanisms that protect liquidity providers from toxic flow, improve capital efficiency, and with integration to the broader XRP Ledger ecosystem. So it's really pretty genius having both models available. Highly liquid asset pairs like major stable coins might trade primarily on order books. Long tail assets or newly issued tokens might bootstrap their liquidity through AMMs, and traders can route whichever venue offers the better execution. Pathfinding on the XRP ledger automatically discovers the best route for complex trades. If you want to swap asset A for asset D, but there's no direct market, the XRP ledger's pathfinding algorithm discovers immediate routes, and it executes those automatically as one single atomic transaction. That ends up being pretty powerful for cross-currency payments and complex asset swaps. A payment denominated in euros might automatically route through stablecoins, XRP, and other intermediate currencies to deliver to the destination address. And it'll do all that with the best possible rate. Market makers that are providing liquidity on the XRP ledger can use payment channels to update quotes thousands of times per second, and then they can settle net positions periodically on the ledger itself. That solves the latency problem that pure on-chain trading faces. You need near instant quote updates and trade execution off-chain, and then you can get on-chain settlement providing final security. It really creates the best of both worlds. You get centralized exchange speed with decentralized exchange security. Integration with multipurpose tokens means all these liquidity mechanisms work seamlessly with big complex financial instruments. Tokenized bonds can trade on order books. Fractional real estate can bootstrap liquidity through AMMs. Structure products can be automatically routed through optimal paths. And interestingly enough, this integration happens at the protocol level without requiring smart contracts, bridges, wrapped tokens, or anything like that. A multipurpose token is a first-class asset on the XRP ledger. It's tradable on the DEX, usable on AMMs, and compatible with all the payment channels natively. Liquidity incentives can be programmed into tokens or domains. An issue we're launching a new tokenized asset might allocate rewards to early liquidity providers. A trading venue might offer fee rebates to market makers that are providing tight spreads, and those kind of incentives are executed automatically through protocol features rather than requiring manual reward distribution. For institutions that are providing liquidity, the XRP Ledger offers professional-grade infrastructure. You have order book trading, programmatic market making, APIs, fee customization, and integration with traditional financial systems. And credit markets are where tokenized assets become truly useful. Holding tokens can be a good strategy, but lending against them, earning yield on them, and using them productively can create actual financial markets. And now, the XRP Ledger is introducing native lending through XLS 65 and XLS 66 amendments. And this isn't DeFi lending where everything requires massive over-collateralization. This is institutional lending with underwritten credit, pooled liquidity, and programmatic terms. Single asset vaults through XLS65 aggregate capital from multiple lenders into pools. You can deposit stable coins, tokenized treasuries, or other approved assets into a vault, and then you receive vault shares that represent your portion of the pool. Those shares can be transferable and let you trade your vault position like any other asset, or non-transferable for regulatory compliance when needed. Vaults can be public, open to anyone, gated through the permission domains, or restricted to credential holding participants. For institutions, vaults can solve the capital aggregate problem. A regional bank might have $10 million to lend, but demand for $100 million in loans. If they participate in the vault with any other lenders, they can access institutional scale lending opportunities while maintaining their own diversification needs. The lending protocol through XLS 66 enables fixed term loans with programmed amortization. Borrowers don't negotiate with individual lenders. They borrow from vaults based on terms set by the vault managers. And underwriting happens off chain where institutions already have a mature credit model. A licensed lender evaluates the borrower's financials, determines credit worthiness, sets terms, and then issues the loan on chain. And so with that, the XRP ledger handles what blockchains do best. Transparent record keeping, automated repayment tracking, and programmatic settlement. Loans are represented as on-ledger contracts specifying all the terms. You can outline principal, interest rate, payment schedule, maturity date, everything that you need. Repayments are tracked automatically, interest calculations are programmatic, and settlement's instant. 
And one more component of the XRP Ledger's institutional finance stack is privacy. And it's implemented through zero knowledge proofs that enable confidentiality. And it does so without sacrificing compliance. With confidential multipurpose tokens, Transaction details remain hidden while maintaining verifiability. When you transact with confidential MPTs, observers see that something happened without knowing what, how much, or between whom. The transactions validated cryptographically using zero-knowledge proofs, and those confirm that the sender has sufficient balance, transfer restrictions are respected, no tokens are created and destroyed, and that all compliance requirements are met. And that's all verified without exposing any underlying data. Selective disclosure is the main innovation that makes this institutional grade. Privacy is the default, but authorized parties can access information through cryptographic keys. An auditor might have disclosure rights to verify activity, or a regulator might have access requirements for compliance monitoring. A counterparty might need to confirm your position for risk management, too. And so that kind of creates a hierarchy of visibility. You have public verification that rules are followed, selective disclosure to authorized parties, and complete privacy from unauthorized observers. It's exactly what institutions need. Privacy for competitive positioning and transparency for accountability. Confidential collateral management is the first major application that institutions can tokenize assets, post them as collateral, and then manage margin requirements, all while keeping their positions confidential. Your counterparty can verify that you meet the requirements through zero knowledge proofs without ever seeing your entire portfolio. For hedge funds and prop firms, this is a big deal. You can operate on transparent blockchain infrastructure without broadcasting your positions to competitors. You get all the blockchain's benefits like immutability, programmability, instant settlement without the privacy nightmare. Privacy preserving KYC checks use zero knowledge proofs to prove compliance without ever exposing your personal data. And so that way you can prove you've passed identity verification and that you're a credit investor or licensed in a jurisdiction, all without revealing the underlying documents or personal details. And that solves a lot of privacy concerns for on-chain identity while maintaining regulatory compliance. So if you're worried about it, you're not putting your passport scan on a public blockchain. You're presenting a cryptographic proof and a verification issued by trusted authorities. Integration with compliance ensures that privacy doesn't create regulatory problems. Deep freeze still works when amounts are hidden. Credentials gate access to confidential tokens. Permission domains control participation and authorized regulators have disclosure rights to monitor this activity. So the genius is balancing privacy with accountability. And most privacy coins choose maximum privacy at the cost of regulatory acceptance. Most transparent blockchains choose maximum transparency at the cost of institutional adoption. The XRP ledger chose programmable privacy that gives institutions exactly the visibility they need for each use case. And so when you're looking at the XRP ledger, you need to understand that it's not a single feature that matters. It's how everything works together at the protocol. Let's go through an example so that you can have a way to understand why this integration is really powerful. Imagine a real estate investment trust that's tokenizing a commercial property portfolio. They issue the asset using a multipurpose token that embeds the ownership rights, dividend schedules, and transfer restrictions. The MPT includes metadata about the underlying properties, rental income, and the regulatory status. Permission domains could require investors to present credentials to prove accredited investor status. And so only verified participants can purchase tokens. Then they enable secondary trading on the native DEX, where the institutional investors can buy and sell shares with the order book efficiency and instant settlement. They integrate with the lending protocol, and that allows token holders to borrow against their real estate tokens without ever selling. And a holder needing liquidity can deposit tokens into a compliant vault and receive a loan to continue to earn dividends while accessing that capital. All this is a big deal for institutions that are operating on decade-long time horizons. Banks don't want to bet their infrastructure on smart contracts that might have bugs, teams that might disappear, or protocols that might get updates that break a lot of things. They want stable, reliable, protocol-level functionality. And so, interestingly enough, that's why the XRP Ledger's development appears slower than some other chains that are just moving fast and breaking things. Each feature on the XRP Ledger goes through extensive testing, validator voting, and production hardening before the launch. And that deliberate pace is a feature for institutional adoption, not a bug. The XRP ledger represents something genuinely unprecedented in blockchain, a complete integrated institutional finance stack built at the protocol level. The vision that Ripple laid out years ago for blockchain infrastructure for institutional finance is now operational. What changes in the next 12 to 24 months is scale. As more institutions realize they can tokenize assets with full compliance, as more lending vaults launch and confidential transactions start to enable private institutional trading, adoption is going to accelerate. We're at the inflection point where infrastructure is ready and institutions are deploying on the XRP ledger. People can say what they want, but everything that we see now is really the culmination of building the unsexy compliance and infrastructure features that actually matter for traditional finance. And it's paying off an adoption that's real rather than speculative. So thanks for watching this deep dive, and I'll see you on the next one.